Let's go over some quick numbers. Let's start by going over something that most people should be able to do. Let's assume that you can put aside $10 a day, which is right around $300 a month. If you take this $10 a day, $300 a month, and you keep investing it every single month, I'll talk about where and how to invest it in just a little bit, but let's assume that you can get a 7% annual return on your money on average. So this is a below average return, okay? Something conservative. But if you keep investing this $300 a month over the next 45 years, so if you do this from 21 to 66, the $300 a month is going to grow to $1.1 million on the side. Now, if you're saying that you don't got $10 a day or $300 a month, yet you also have a $300 a month car payment or more, then you might want to rethink where and how you're spending your money. If you want to be a little bit more aggressive and now you can put aside $20 a day or $600 a month and you can get the same 7% return, which is below average, below the historical average, then you will be able to grow this money to 2.2 million dollars over a lifetime on the side. And let's have some fun. What if you can be even more aggressive and you can put aside $100 a day, which is right around, let's say, $3,000 a month. If you can do that and you can maintain the same below average return, then over your lifetime, you will be able to grow your money to $11 million dollars on the side. Now, while this all sounds good in theory, it's still theory because now the question is, how do you actually make it happen? Because me sitting here saying that if you put $300 a month into your investments, that you would have grown it to $1.1 million is kind of like the people who say things like, if you invested 45 cents in Tesla or Bitcoin, then the 45 cent investment would have been worth $4.4 million today. So you are very not smart for not making that 44 cent investment 20 years ago. It's impossible to predict what is going to happen. So the question is, what do you do today to actually build these millions in your lifetime? How do you do this practically and how do you make it happen? Well, the first part of making it happen is you gotta work on this side of the equation. How do you get this extra cash? How do you find this extra cash every single month? And there's two things you gotta do on the mental side of how do you actually get this cash. The first thing you gotta do is you gotta stop living in your feelings. We live in a culture where people live in their feelings, where when people want something, they want it now. And when you want it now, you're gonna do whatever it takes to get it. And when I say do whatever it takes, I don't mean put in the hustle and get the cash to actually be able to afford it. I mean do whatever it takes, like put it on your credit card or finance it or pay it off in installments. If the way your mind works is I just made a thousand dollars, so how can I spend this thousand dollars? I can go on this vacation, I can buy these shoes, I can go out to eat here. You you will never have a chance to achieve this. It's not possible, okay? Because the first thing you gotta do is you gotta break out of your feelings and understand that now anytime you get paid does not mean that you gotta go out and spend this money. Anytime you get paid means now you have more money to invest because you gotta put some money aside towards your investments. So the first thing you gotta do is you gotta stop living in your feelings and then you gotta stop spending all your money. You gotta figure out what that right investment amount is for you. I recommend 15% of your incomes. So anytime you make a dollar, 15 cents should go towards your investments, but I'm just a random guy on YouTube. You gotta make your own decisions. The second thing you do after you start putting some extra money aside is now you gotta start growing the pot. You gotta start earning more money. The thing that bugs me about traditional financial planners and traditional financial planning is that traditional financial planning focuses just on pinching pennies. But the thing that you gotta understand is that at the end of the day, a penny saved is just a penny. Yes, you should not be blowing all your money. Yes, you should not spend your money as soon as you get it. Yes, you gotta be smart with your money. But I also want you to work to grow the pie instead of just working to figure out how can you squeeze some extra pennies because at the end of the day, there's a limit to how little you can spend but there's no limit to how much you can earn. So once you understand how to spend your money, once you understand how to live below your means, once you understand how to build a system where anytime you get paid, 15% of your paycheck is automatically gonna get invested, the next thing you gotta do is worry about how can I grow the pie? How can I make the pie bigger? Because if you're making $40,000 a year and you're investing 15%, that's good. But if you're making $400,000 a year and now you're investing 15%, that's even better. Again, going back to the beginning of this video, most people are not gonna be able to start their own business and most people are not gonna earn a doctor's salary. But what you can do is you can supplement your income. If you're not happy with how much money you're earning, maybe you can earn a second job. Maybe you can ask for a raise. Maybe you can get a promotion. Maybe you can start a side hustle or do something to earn some extra cash. There are a lot of ways that you can supplement the income that you're getting right now. That way you have more money to grow this pot. That way you have more money going towards your investments. 
So the first thing you gotta do if you wanna get this is you gotta work on this. That means you gotta stop living in your feelings and you gotta find a way to earn some more money that way you have this cash to grow. Once you got this cash right here, the next thing you gotta figure out is how do you make this interest, this return on your money? What do you do with this extra cash that you're investing? By the way, if you're interested in learning more about my 15% rule and how to build a financial system that works to build you wealth, to build your savings, that way you understand how to use your money, I already made a video on YouTube where I explained how all of that works. So if you wanna watch that video, I will link it for you in the description below. But let's talk about how to actually invest your money now. The whole idea of investing is you wanna create this machine that is printing you money without you physically having to work. But in order to create this machine, you gotta invest one of two things. Either you gotta invest your time or you gotta invest your money. Now, for a lot of people, either you're not gonna have the time or you're not gonna wanna put in the time to do it. So I'm gonna focus in on the passive investments because a passive investment is where all you're doing is you're taking some of your cash and you're putting it towards creating this machine that is printing you money without you physically having to go to work because you're going to work to get paid. Now, you're getting this paycheck and you're gonna take a piece of that paycheck and you're gonna put it towards buying this machine that's gonna print you money. Now, it's not an actual money printing machine because you can go to jail for that, but it's a kind of a theoretical machine that's gonna print you money through your investments. The whole idea behind making money is the more value that you can provide to the marketplace, the more money you're gonna make. That's why doctors earn more money than cashiers because doctors provide more value to the marketplace than cashiers do. Now, this doesn't mean that your life is not valuable or that you're not a valuable person as a cashier. This just means in the economic marketplace, a doctor provides more financial value so they attract more money than a cashier does. So now when it comes to your investments, the whole idea here is you wanna put your money in a place that is going to create value or attract value. So you wanna use your money as a tool to kind of create this value thing that way it can continue to pay you without you having to physically work to continually build value. So maybe there's other people involved or there's a team involved where this machine is now working to build value and create value for you because you have put your money towards it and your time is out doing something else. The most accessible way to do that is by putting your money in the stock market because the stock market is a place where you can go out and invest in big companies. So Amazon, McDonald's, Facebook, these companies trade on the stock market. So when you go out and you buy shares in a company like Amazon or McDonald's, McDonald's, you become one of the owners of Amazon or McDonald's. Now you don't get to tell Amazon or McDonald's how to run the company and you don't gotta go to work for Amazon or McDonald's, but when these companies make more money, so do you. Maybe your stock price will go up because if you buy a stock for $100 a share and it goes up to $200 a share and you sell it, you just made $100. The second way you can make money is through dividends. When a company like McDonald's has a whole bunch of cash in their bank account at the end of the year, they can take some of this cash and just give it away to the shareholders, people like you, investors, through dividends. And so these dividends are literally just cash payments that you get every three months, every quarter for doing nothing except owning the right company. Between 1926 and 2008, 18. The average return for the S&P 500, which is an index in the stock market, which all it means is it's a group that represents the top 500 companies in the stock market. This S&P 500 over those years grew by an average of 10 to 11 percent a year on average. This doesn't mean that every single year the stock market is gonna go up by 10 to 11%. That means over the long run, the stock market has grown by 10 to 11% a year for almost the last 100 years. But this also includes the fact that sometimes you're gonna have stock market crashes and other times you're gonna have stock market rallies. Over the long run, you've seen the stock market grow by around 10% a year for the last century. So if the stock market continues to grow at its previous rates and you can just invest your money and even get a below average return, then retiring a millionaire is no problem because you can just throw your money into the stock market and hopefully get the same returns and boom, there you have it, the millionaire status. Except there's a couple issues with that. The first issue is many people do not believe that the stock market is going to continue to grow at the same rate that we saw happen over the last century because our economy is a whole lot bigger. So it's not as easy for our economy to grow as fast as it once did, which is why we might not see the same returns in the stock market over the next century. The second issue is you gotta know how to actually invest your money in the market because if you just take your money and you randomly put it in some stocks, then that doesn't mean you're gonna meet the stock market return, right? Because the S&P 500 is an average of 500 companies in the stock market. That's not the entire stock market. During the last century, you had a lot of stocks go bankrupt and go bust. And so if you invest in a company that goes bankrupt or bust, then you lose your money and you won't get these returns even though the stock market went up because the company you invested in 
but down. If you enjoyed this short clip from my longer videos, here's another clip that I think you'll love. And while you're at it, if you're interested in learning more about how to start generating passive income, our team put together an amazing guide on how to start generating passive income for free. All you gotta do is click that button right over there. Thank you for watching, and as always, keep hustling.